Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Recently, we covered the magical Blue Scuzzy, an open source and open hardware project that replaces your aging Scuzzy hard drive with the neat microcontroller based SD solution. And it has a bunch of really, really interesting features. But we ran into one little hiccup, speed. So today we're gonna try and get as much speed as possible out of this little blue device using some of your suggestions and actually some direction from the Blue Scuzzy developers. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy stuffing vintage computers with technology that at the time would have seemed like literal magic, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We do a lot of these kinds of experiments around here, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So I bought this blue SCSI with the express purpose of sticking it in my PowerPC upgraded Mystic Color Classic. Check out that build video right here. As a quick refresher, Blue SCSI allows you to boot your SCSI based computer straight from hard disk images stored on tiny little micro SD cards, which is incredibly versatile. You can swap images on and off your Mac, share them between different Macs. You can put a bunch of images on a single SD card and have them show up as different drives on your machine. You can even boot those images up in emulators on your modern machines. All sorts of cool stuff. I thought it would be a perfect fit for experiments with this really cool and really unique Mac, trying different operating systems and different setups. And for the most part, it's perfect. Except for that one hiccup, speed. If you saw the last video on Blue SCSI, check that out here. We ran speed benchmarks against my normal go-to device, the SCSI to SD, which I have in a ton of my computers. It's fast, reliable, and it's been out for a long time. And this thing trounced the Blue SCSI by a lot. I was really shocked. Well, I'm gonna lead off with one update right away. Eric Helgeson reached out after seeing those benchmarks. Yeah, that's right, this Eric Helgeson. And he let me know that the blank disk images that were linked from that GitHub page were actually formatted with Lido drivers instead of Apple drivers. And Lido drivers are dog slow in comparison. And he wasn't kidding. Just look at these benchmarks. Comparing the Lido formatted disk image, which is the first line here in yellow, versus the FWB formatted image here in purple, that is a heck of a difference in benchmark speed. And if we break out the different tests, we can see that, yeah, pretty much in every respect, it's better. Sequential read 512, look, it's over 100% improvement with the FWB driver versus Lido. So he's already removed those from the GitHub page, but if you're getting slow speeds on your own blue SCSI, make sure you're formatted with Apple's own drivers or FWB. It'll be much, much faster. You know what else is blazing fast? Using the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Easily create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business, brand, or even yourself using Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website cataloging my experiences with all these benchmarks and different hard drive drivers. Hey, it's my passion. I could build it in minutes with Squarespace. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and mobile friendly. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also optimize for SEO, create a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now the most common suggestion that I got from you all was to try the benchmarks without this little extender deal that I was using to get access to the SD card without having to remove the case of the Color Classic. So I took benchmarks both with this cable and without the cable, and uh, yeah, let me show you what I found. As we can see with the benchmarks on the blue SD card, 
With extension is the bottom purple bar here, and without the extension is the yellow bar here, and uh, yeah, it makes really no noticeable difference. All of these other benchmarks here show the same score for both devices. The next most common suggestion I got was to try a faster SD card or one that's rated for more writes. So I got three different fancy SD cards and then uh, one kind of generic SD card as a benchmark. I got this purple one, which is a Western Digital WD Purple designed for smart video recording with uh, ultra endurance and 64 TBW whatever that means. I got this blue Samsung card, which uh, <laughs> kind of went Hulk on the packaging. And this one is rated for speed, I guess. Read speed up to 160 megabytes per second, write speed 120 megabytes per second. And it says it's for smartphones, cameras, etc. cetera. So uh, yeah, then I found this little white one laying around that says high endurance. I think this used to be in my old dash cam. And then just as a benchmark, I got this PNY micro SD HC4, which uh, I don't know where this came from, but I think it came in something. So let's benchmark these cards against each other. And then let me show you something really weird I found with the PowerPC upgrade. Okay, and now on to the most surprising result of all, at least to me, I tested all of those four different SD cards against one another. And uh, yeah, really a negligible difference between any of them. So even the PNY card, which is just your basic run of the mill, nothing special SD card, yeah, was only about 4% slower at worst than the fastest card, which was the blue card. So the blue card scored a 97, the PNY card scored a 93. Yeah, it just doesn't make a huge difference. But from here on out, since the purple card did win by a sliver of a margin, we'll continue using this card for the rest of our experiments. And then let me show you something really weird. So let me show you the blue 68K benchmark, which is the 68LC040 processor, versus the PowerPC upgrade for the same SD card. So yeah, look at that. The yellow line here is the 68LC040 processor, and the blue line here is with the PowerPC upgrade enabled and disk speed is for some reason 70% faster with the 68K processor versus the PowerPC processor. <laughs> I have no idea why that would be the case. That seems completely counterintuitive to me. Maybe it has something to do with the RAM limits or I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if someone has an idea of why this would be the case, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so now what I want to do is take the fastest one of those micro SD cards, even though it's only faster by a hair, and we're going to upgrade the firmware of our blue SCSI. And uh, a new firmware actually just came out that's supposed to be up to 10% faster. Then we'll take that same SD card, pop it into our SCSI to SD, and uh, see just how much of that speed gap we can close. I still think the SCSI to SD is gonna wind up being faster, but I think we're gonna get much closer. Okay, so now I'm gonna flash the firmware on my blue SCSI to the latest version using an ST link. And uh, you might not have to do this because the new firmware actually supports updating this by USB. So I'm never gonna have to use this ST link on here again but it's pretty easy to do. And uh, I'll link to the video with instructions on how to do this right here, in case you have an old blue SCSI that you wanna update as well. But let's hook this up and uh, yeah, looks like I have wired this correctly. And then using VS code here, we'll just uh, go ahead and do the flash. All right, programming finished and uh, this thing is still blink blocking away, so I think it worked. Well, thanks Spindler, we booted right back up with no fuss. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. Let's rerun these benchmarks with the updated firmware. Okay, so I've retaken the benchmarks with the Blue SCSI updated firmware, and I've retaken benchmarks using the same SD card in the SCSI to SD. What I haven't done yet is compare them all together, so 
Let's do that right now. Okay, so let's start out by loading the benchmarks for the SCSI to SD. We'll use that as the 100% scale and remove this default here. And now let's load the purple benchmark results. And hey, look at that. Just with the correct formatting from FWB, we have almost identical disk scores. 96% for the blue SCSI compared to the 100% for SCSI to SD. Publishing disk is a little bit different, but yeah, let's see what happens with the after the firmware update benchmark. Right here. Whoa, look at that. They weren't kidding. Our score for the post firmware update on the purple SD card in the blue SCSI is actually faster than the SCSI to SD benchmark, 109% versus 100%. So yeah, 9% faster in the overall disk speed benchmark here. Yeah, so in some of these tests, like the sequential test, sequential read test here, the properly formatted and then firmware updated blue SCSI is dramatically faster than the same SD card in the SCSI to SD. And then it kind of bounces around, some tests being faster, some tests being slower. Wow, what a difference that makes. Okay, so those benchmarks are really interesting, but what really matters for the feel of the speed is throughput. So I used SCSI Director 4.0 Pro to measure that on both the SCSI to SD and the firmware updated blue SCSI. And then just for giggles, I did it on an old Apple branded Quantum Pro drive from 1993. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm not totally confident in how to interpret these results, but the blue SCSI is on the left here, SCSI to SD is on the right here, and uh, it kind of looks like the read performance on the blue SCSI is better, but the write performance on the SCSI to SD is better. But yeah, if you see something here that's interesting, let me know. I kinda, I wonder why this levels off like that. And then just for fun, here is the result from the old spinning disc, which appears to be slower than both of them, but read and write are the same on this drive. Okay, so that'll do it for this look at increasing speed on your blue SCSI device. And yeah, we really did. I'm so impressed by just how much speed we got out of a firmware update and a new SD card. And uh, yeah, I love the blue SCSI. I love it a lot. And it's definitely gonna stay in this mystic. So thank you so much to everyone who reached out with ideas to try and suggestions on getting speed out of this thing. And thank you, Eric, for reaching out and telling me about the Lido situation. I definitely, definitely recommend checking out the Blue SCSI project for yourself. Remember, it's a non-commercial project. It's open hardware. So you can buy it pre-assembled from someone or you can buy the components yourself and put it together. It's just based on a blue pill development board. <laughs> it's amazing. And taking all of these benchmarks on all of these different SD cards, I was really reminded of the benefits of using a blue SCSI. Instead of a SCSI to SD where I'd have to write the image to a new SD card every time, instead, all I did was pop in a new SD card, drag and drop the image of the hard drive over to it and boot the machine up off it. And then when I had those benchmarks, put in the next SD card, drag the image onto it and put that in here, boot it right back up. It's just so incredibly versatile, dragging and dropping disk images from one machine to another, copying them, backing them up, opening them up in an emulator. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to B Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Briggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Ruck K Mods, John Malman, Nano, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.